They're back from the grave and ready to party. I, I think things are getting out of here. The return of the living dead. Welcome to Horror Month. Welcome back, horror fans, to Box Office Maniacs and Horror Month 2018. And we're back once again with the next chapter in the Return of the Living Dead series, the franchise of Return of the Living Dead. Yep, they actually went ahead and started making even more sequels because uh, you know David wasn't crazy about them doing even a second movie to this but they went farther than that and they made I just get a little confused sometimes Return of the Living Dead part 3 and this actually comes from Lionsgate it's a uh, Vistron video, Vest Vestron video. Vestron video. And uh, I did a little unboxing on this thing, so if you want to take a look at it, it's very short because I didn't know this was my first time getting this from uh, the this company. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll do an unboxing. So here's a very short unboxing. Take a little bit closer look. Looks pretty freaking cool. I'm I'm shocked on how good it actually looks. I, I was not expecting it to look this good. Uh, it has a slip cover to it again not expecting to have that and it's really clear and it has it's very shiny It has you know the silver down here with all the all the extras tons of extras on here, too So it looks really cool. So let's take it out of the slip cover and uh, Yeah, the back of the same and the front's the same. All right, so let's open it up and see what's on the inside. Oh Wow, nothing <laughs> So very impressive outside not a very impressive inside. It would have been cool if they uh, would have thrown some little bit of extras in there. But nope, that's it. Uh, but yeah, I still like it though. I think it's a really cool cover. Very clean, very bright, well done artwork. Um, the back of it as well. Everything looks really good. Very well done. Alright, so this is my very first Blu-ray that I've ever bought from this company. The Collector Series, it's called. And I can tell you, unlike the second movie, I wasn't sure if I had ever seen until I started watching it. I'm like, oh yeah, I saw this. I have never seen this one. This was a brand new movie for me. Never seen this movie. But I have seen this movie. I saw this movie when it came out uh, way back in, it came out in 1993. And the whole reason I got into it was because it was Return of the Living Dead Part 3. And I was like, oh wow. I can't believe they made a third one and I can't wait to see this and it looks a little bit different and I, I mean I never saw a trailer for it or anything it just came out on video it went straight to video as far as I know uh, or at least that's the only place I ever saw it was on on the video shelves back when they had blockbuster video <laughs> that's where I rented this and I have to say the first time I ever watched this, I was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> well, being this is the first time I ever seen this movie, I gotta tell you, Vince, I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good sequel to the first movie. Unlike the second one, this one didn't have comedy in it. It was an actual horror movie. There was very little or no comedy at all in this movie. It was pretty much straightforward horror movie. But see, that's what also kind of threw me off. Like I said, the first time I saw it, I was just kind of like, okay, what? because I was expecting 
what happened with the first two films, where they had a mix of comedy and straight horror film. And that I was expecting that, because it's Return of the Living Dead. It, it, and you're right, it's not. It's not anything like that. It, it where It's actually where Return of the Living Dead Part 2 amped up the humor and became goofy and went that way with it. This one took what was serious about Return of the Living Dead and went that way with it. <laughs> went completely the other way with it. And before I get too far into the review, I gotta say I was super super impressed by this company, by the collector series of Lionsgate and Vistron or whatever they're called. It looked gorgeous. The, the, the transfer here was spick spectacular absolutely amazing the sound was amazing the picture was amazing i was blown away on just how great this movie looked just looks spectacular yeah i totally agree with that totally agree and, and and again watching it from video the first time i ever saw this was on on vhs and as we all know i mean it, there's no real comparison between blu-ray and, and vhs i mean you watch something on vhs it's like watching it on regular TV now. You know, everything's blurry, everything's dark, or, or and because it's usually, you know, the old pan and scan where it, you don't see the widescreen or anything, so you miss half the picture. This one is completely different from that, and it's crystal clear, and the, the colors are just phenomenal watching it, especially on a 4K television. It, it's just phenomenal looking. So as for the story, it continues the story, obviously, from Return of the Living Dead with all these canisters. And I actually think it's a cool idea for a story to have the, these, uh, this government did this weird experiment way back when they did, and they brought these dead people back from the dead by accident and stuck them all in these canisters, and now these canisters are appearing, disappearing, ending up in places they're not supposed to. I, I think it's a great idea for um, a horror franchise. What they did here was his kid's dad was in the military and he was doing experiments with those those jugs, those those canisters. Because they're like, oh, well maybe, you know, they, of course they wanted to make it from war and war purposes and stuff like that, obviously, because it's the military. And, you know, I, I like the story. I actually thought that was a good idea for a story for Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, I would agree with that as, as well because I, I liked where they went with it. I mean, if, especially if you're going to make it a serious horror film, that that was the the serious part of Return of the Living Dead was the whole trioxin thing and the whole you know the military having. I mean, that was in the first film because the 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 one government guy, military guy, was looking for the canisters and he and he couldn't find them and when they did find them well they had to nuke the whole place well in this one it's you know they still have the canisters and, the, and they still have thousands of canisters and you, I guess you can kind of say that you know this is also the, the continuation of part one and part two because they they probably took a lot of those bodies from those those first films and put them in canisters so it, it, it was cool I liked what they were doing and the whole idea of them trying to do a bioweapon kind of thing with it. It, it kind of made it like alien in a way. So the story goes here, and I don't want to give away too many plot points, but the story goes to where the kid finds out that his dad's going to be moving or he's going to ship him off to military school or something like that. I don't remember, but he was getting rid of his kid to go do something. And the kid's, you know, in love with this girl and he's like, let's run away. So he puts the girl in the back of the motorcycle and takes off and then they get into a motorcycle accident, the girl dies, that's the one that's on the front of this cover, and then the kid, of course, thinks, oh, well, my dad's doing these experiments, bringing the dead back to life, I'm going to go and do that to my girlfriend and bring her back to life. And, I, it, I don't know, I just thought it was a really good idea for a story. I thought that the acting was decent. The effects were really good. These All these practical effects in this really blew me away. They're just fantastic. Well, I liked them because not only did Steve Johnson, who has worked on lots of horror films, including Nightmare on Elm Street and and others, uh, Ghostbusters even, 
you know, he got in there and, and he did the effects for it. So I, I like the effects in here and they weren't goofy like they were in the second one. They were more, they were more like what you saw in the, in the first film. But some of them, I will say, you could totally tell they were like, when, they, when it was puppets, you could tell it was a puppet, you know. When it was animatronic, you could totally tell it was anim animatronic. But they did do it well in here, and better than, like I said, better than what they did in Return of the Living Dead 2. And this is an unrated version of this film, and it gets bloody. It really is. There's a lot of blood in this movie. There's a lot of disgusting, gross things in this film. It really sh shocked me how gross this movie actually gets. So if you're really squeamish, you know, I don't know if I would recommend watching this, but if you love your blood and guts and heads rolling and, and intestines being pulled out, you'll love this movie. Which is, that's what it should have been. That's, that, that's Night of the Living Dead. That's Return of the Living Dead. I mean, Return of the Living Dead got pretty bloody. So it was nice to see that go back to that, where part two, yeah, there was blood in it, but it wasn't really, it was goofy. You know, the, everything was done as, as a joke, as a parody, and this is more serious. So I, I, I enjoyed this film. I actually did enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, I, and I, I was surprised. I was expecting something just to be terrible. I don't know why. Because I guess because I never saw it after the second one. <laughs> and I thought, oh, here we go. This is going to be bad. And it pleasantly surprised me on how good this film was. And to tell you the truth, it kind of reminded me of that um, show I Zombie, you know, where the, the woman's a zombie and she's still trying to not be a zombie. And so now this guy has a girlfriend who's a zombie and he's trying to help her out, knowing full well, you know, what she is. And you had that whole scenario going on in this film. And it works really good, and it, and it looks, and it's just great. And he had this weird cover of all this crazy stuff all over this woman. <laughs> and I thought that was great too. You know, again, this is the end of the film. I mean, they're basically showing the end of the movie here on the cover. But it was a really awesome thing. She started going more like Pinhead towards the end of this film. I, I loved her transformation too, because it wasn't like automatically she was a zombie. It was like she slowly started becoming a zombie you know she slowly starts to become this creature and I, I, I liked the way they did that I, and you know it, I, maybe it had something to do with the fact that you know she had just died and I don't know but it was, it was cool it was like it, it was cool the way she did it I mean she really did and she gave a great performance yeah, they all did. So, again, totally shocked by this film. I was completely not expecting to like it, and I really liked it. I thought the effects were good, the story was good, the, the quality of this Blu-ray is outstanding. So, in all, I would have to give Return of the Living Dead Part 3 a 4 out of 5. Yeah, I absolutely love everything about this Blu-ray. I mean, it's it's the like you said, the picture's crystal clear, the sound is great, and the movie itself is decent. I I, I did enjoy it. I like the the aspect of it, the 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 whole military thing of it. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed a lot of the performances. The only thing that kind of disappoints me about it is I kind of wish they still would have had the dark humor that the first one did and had that mix of that because at times in this it does get way too serious and it, it you know I, I don't know it, for some people that might be great but for me I would have still like to seen a little more funny stuff in it there's some characters in here you can kind of go huh, yeah he's kind of funny but <laughs> I, I, I did like the river man, the river guy. He was good, a good character. Yeah, exactly, river man. And, well, then you got the those um, Hispanic characters in here. You know, some of them are kind of crazy, and you, but 
at the same time, they're also just being mean and they're being serious. And, you know, I, I think just some parts of it like that, like I said, just got way too serious. So I would have rather had a little bit of comedy into it. But outside of that, I did enjoy this film and I would definitely give it a four out of five. Now there are extras on here, and I'm kind of interested, I haven't watched them yet, so as good as this film is, as good quality as it is, I'm really interested in seeing what sort of the quality of these extras that we have here. And there's a lot of bunch of audio commentaries, interviews, things like that on here, so we need to get to them right now, and here are the extras on this disc. Hi everybody, welcome back to Box Office Maniacs. I'm Becky Graves, here stepping in, helping with Horror Month for 2018 because there's just too much stuff, there's too much horror, and not enough month. I got tagged in. I'm doing some extras. Right now, we're going to talk about Return of the Living Dead 3. Um, this is not a Scream Factory release. This is actually released by Vestron Video, which you guys might recognize that name if you ever rented movies at a video store in the 80s. It was a very popular uh, company back then that released a lot of movies. But it still has an impressive lot of stuff and a lot of the extras are made by the same production company that makes the extras on Scream Factory which is uh, Red Shirt Pictures. So similar quality and there's a lot of extras on this disc so let's get into it. Uh, first off there's two commentaries. Again there's not enough hours in the day, I didn't have a chance to watch them, but they sound interesting. There's one commentary with just the director, Brian Yuzna. Yuzna? Not sure how you say that. Brian Yuzna. Um, and the other commentary is with Melinda Clark, who's the star of the movie, and the special effects director, Tom Rainioni. Sure. Um, so those are the two commentary tracks that we have available. Uh, there are also a lot of uh, featurettes. Um, the first one is Ashes to Ashes, which is the director, Brian Yuzna, and the screenwriter, John Penny, um, talking a little bit about the process of making this movie. Apparently, the company that Brian just totally froze, just like in the movie! Apparently, the company that decided that they wanted to make this movie uh, thought that they had the rights to Return of the Living Dead, like to the name, and so they went ahead and started working on it and then found out that they didn't have the rights to it so they had to go and get the rights to it, something like that. Basically they got the rights to the name Return of the Living Dead for the franchise but this movie really could stand alone. Doesn't have much to do with the other two movies. They were told that if they used the name Return of the Living Dead they would have to have uh, the trioxin in there and that was about it. They could just, you know, do whatever. So um, that's it kind of explains why this movie is so dissimilar from the other ones. It has a very different feel. This is a very interesting featurette with the director and the screenwriter. Um, the next one that we have is called Living Dead Girl and it's an interview with Melinda Clark uh, who played Julie in the movie. I found it very interesting. Apparently she's been in a lot of stuff since then but I didn't recognize her. Like looking at her now, I recognize her as she's been in other TV shows and movies and none of them are coming to mind right now, but you probably know her, you probably recognize her. This is actually only her second film, so uh, she's very uh, new to movies at the point that she made this. And she had just finished being in a play where about Sid and Nancy, where she played Nancy. Um, so she said she used a lot of that creative um, inspiration for the way she portrayed Julie, which I found very interesting. And she talked a lot about the makeup process, about how long it took to do her makeup for the end of the movie, and how many hours she was in it, and how stressful that was. Um, but yeah, I thought that was very interesting. The next featurette is Romeo is Bleeding, which is with J. Trevor Edmond, who plays the main guy in the movie. He talked a little bit about how at the time he was trying to get uh, different 
roles in a lot of different TV shows and movies, but just kept getting passed over for other people. And that when he got the script for this, he definitely knew that he wanted it, and so he studied uh, Romeo and Juliet because he thought that, you know, this was definitely like a tortured romance kind of a movie, more than a zombie movie, and he thinks that that's what got him the role. He also talked about uh, how a special effects person blew menthol rocks into his face to try to get him to cry. Uh, <laughs> uh, the next one is called Trimark and Trioxin, uh, and it's with uh, the producer and the editor of the movie. They talk a little bit about way that the horror market was in the late 80s, early 90s, how a lot of companies were making B and C horror movies for uh, the video store market, for like your, you know, local video rental places, things that were going direct to video. So low budget, you know, quick turnaround kind of thing. Um, and a lot of the people that came to make this movie were from Full Moon, who made, you know, like Puppet Master and all that stuff. Um, and then also the same company, I guess Trimark, that made this also made Leprechaun and Wishmaster and things like that. So yeah, a lot of all those same companies were making these types of movies at that time. Next up is called The Resurrected Dead. It's with Steve Johnson and Chris Nelson and some of the other effects uh, people that did effects for this movie. They talked about They talked about how at this time it was common for studios to hire multiple different effects companies to do the effects for one movie just in case one company wasn't able to get the whole thing done. Um, and so they talked about how, you know, they had individual different people from different companies doing different effects and about how they designed Julie's look and her makeup. So those are the featurettes that were on this. I thought I found them all pretty interesting. There weren't any that were super boring or anything. So yeah, so that's five different featurettes from different cast and crew of the movie. Um, and I found them all really interesting. None of them were too long and they all, it wasn't a lot of repetitive stuff repeating the same things over and over. So I think they're all worth watching. They won't really take you that long to watch. Um, then there's also a storyboard gallery, a still gallery, and the two theatrical trailers. So yeah, all in all, a lot of interesting extras on here. Not quite to the level of a Scream Factory release, but certainly more than most other horror movies get. And they're worth your time. I thought they were pretty good. Stay spooky. Happy Halloween. <laughs>